Why do I have to cut my hair? Jacob breathed deeply and then released it. Because you didn't see the way they looked at you. He kept driving onward. Sam, don't you have any better clothes than this? He tugged on my tank shirt. You got to get rid of this and those cut off shorts too. You're attracting the wrong kind of attention. I'm not trying to attract any attention. I'm not doing anything. It's not you, Sam, he interrupted. It's those perverts that I'm worried about. You're growing up and men are starting to look. Why would men be looking at a 12 year old girl? A chill ran down my spine and I slumped down in my seat. So why do I have to cut my hair? He stared at me and then looked away. Because, Sam, the best way to keep you safe is to make you look like you're my brother. Grab her feet! Whatever it felt like to touch a dead body, stiff and rigid or rubbery like a piece of chicken, I had no plans to find out. We have to get her inside, Jacob said. It's the right thing to do, and you know it. I need your help, Sam. You have to help me. When I woke up that morning, my head throbbed. Every sound seemed magnified, and my brain vibrated inside my skull, jiggling around with the sole purpose of torturing me. When Jacob got up for work, he turned on all the lights, every single one of them. I covered my head with my pillow and cursed him. But he didn't care. He laughed and went about making a horrible racket, slamming drawers, running the water longer than necessary, and using the motel-supplied hairdryer, even though he'd never used a hairdryer in his life. I pulled the blankets and pillows around me tighter to muffle the light and sound. I'll be gone most of the day, he said. So no more drinking. The last beer is mine anyway. You touch it and I swear to God, I'll kick your hind end so hard you won't be able to sit for a year. No worries there. I never plan to touch alcohol ever, ever again.